A recent discovery has shown that water can evaporate without the requirement of heat, which came as a surprise to many. This phenomenon occurs due to the presence of light. The process of evaporation occurs ceaselessly around us, ranging from the sweat that cools our bodies to the morning dew that dissipates with the rising sun. However, science's comprehension of this omnipresent phenomenon may have been deficient, lacking a crucial element until now. Over the past few years, certain researchers have been perplexed by their discovery that water contained within a hydrogel, a sponge-like material, has been evaporating at a rate that surpasses the amount of thermal energy it has been receiving. The surplus has been substantial, exceeding the theoretical maximum rate by two to three times or more. Following a string of new experiments and simulations, along with a review of previously claimed results from various groups that had argued surpassing the thermal limit, a team of scholars from MIT has come to a staggering realization. In specific circumstances, at the boundary between water and air, light can trigger evaporation directly without the involvement of heat, and it does so with greater efficiency than heat. The water used in these experiments was contained within a hydrogel substance, However, the researchers propose that this process may occur under alternate conditions. Yao Dong Tu, a postdoctoral researcher at MIT, along with four other colleagues, published their findings in a paper featured in PNAS this week. Gang Chen, a mechanical engineering professor, was also a member of the team. According to researchers, this phenomenon could potentially impact the development and progression of fog and clouds. Therefore, it is crucial to consider its effects on climate models to enhance their precision. Additionally, it could have significant implications in various industrial procedures, including solar-powered desalination of water. This may even lead to the possibility of alternatives to the current method of converting sunlight to heat first. The discovery is unexpected, as water by itself does not absorb light to a considerable extent. This is why one can see through clean water for several feet until the surface below. The team's initial approach to utilizing solar evaporation for desalination involved placing light-absorbing particles, which were black in color, into a water container. This was done to facilitate the transformation of sunlight into heat. During their research, the team stumbled upon the findings of another group that had achieved an evaporation rate that was twice the thermal limit. This limit represents the maximum amount of evaporation that can occur given a specific amount of heat based on fundamental physical laws, such as the principle of energy conservation. In their experiments, water was trapped within a hydrogel. Initially, Chen and Tu were doubtful of these findings. However, they decided to conduct their own experiments using hydrogels, including a sample of the material from the other group. We tested it under our solar simulator and it worked stated Chen, confirming the unusually high evaporation rate. So we believed them now. Chen and Tu proceeded to create and test their own hydrogels. The team started to develop a suspicion that the additional evaporation was attributed to the light's influence. It was believed that the photons of light were dislodging clusters of water molecules from the surface of the water. This occurrence was only observable at the interface between the air and water specifically on the hydrogel material surface. It is possible that this effect also happens on the sea surface, as well as on the surfaces of droplets within clouds or fog. The laboratory scientists kept a watchful eye on the exterior of a hydrogel, which can be described as a jello-like substance, composed mainly of water held in place by a lattice of thin membranes that resemble a sponge. With meticulous calibration, they gauged its reactions to fabricated sunlight of varying wavelengths. In order to measure the rate of evaporation, the researchers conducted a series of experiments in which they exposed the water surface to various colors of light in a specific sequence. To achieve this, they positioned a container full of water-laden hydrogel onto a scale and monitored the temperature above the surface of the hydrogel while directly measuring the amount of mass that was lost to evaporation. To ensure that the results were not influenced by extra heat, the lights were shielded. The researchers discovered that the effect was dependent on the color of the light and reached its peak at a specific wavelength of green light. This color dependence is not related to heat, which supports the theory that the light itself plays a role in at least some of the evaporation that occurs. 
Efforts were made by the researchers to replicate the observed rate of evaporation. They utilized the same setup, but instead of light, they heated the material with electricity. Despite having the same thermal input as the initial test, the amount of water that evaporated did not exceed the thermal limit. The outcome was different when simulated sunlight was introduced, as it validated that the extra evaporation was caused by light. According to Chen, water alone does not have a significant capacity to absorb light, and neither does the hydrogel material. However, when the two entities merge, they become potent absorbers. This results in the material being able to efficiently capture the energy of solar photons and surpass the thermal threshold all without requiring any obscure dyes for absorption. The researchers have coined the term photomolecular effect to describe their discovery and are currently exploring ways to implement it in practical applications. Their focus is on utilizing this phenomenon to enhance the effectiveness of desalination systems that are powered by solar energy and they have received funding from the Abdul Latif Jamil Water and Food Systems Lab to conduct research on this topic. Additionally, they have been awarded a grant from Bose to study the potential impact of this effect on climate change modeling. According to Tu, the typical desalination process involves two stages, the evaporation of water into vapor, followed by the condensation of the vapor into fresh water. However, with this newfound breakthrough, there is potential for achieving optimal efficiency in the evaporation phase. It is also possible that this process could be applicable in scenarios where drying certain materials is necessary. According to Chen, it is possible to increase the limit of water produced through solar desalination, which is currently 1.5 kilograms per square meter, by three or four times using the light-based approach. Chen believes that this breakthrough could potentially make desalination more affordable. According to Tu, this occurrence has the potential to be utilized in evaporative cooling techniques, where the change in phase can be utilized to create a solar-powered cooling mechanism with high efficiency. At present, the researchers are collaborating with other organizations that are striving to reproduce their discoveries. The objective of this collaboration is to counteract the doubt and distrust that has arisen due to the unexpected nature of their findings and the hypothesis that has been proposed to explicate them. Among the members of the research team were Jiawei Zhou, Shouting Lin, Mohammed Al Shra, and Xuan He Zhao, all of whom were affiliated with the Department of Mechanical Engineering at MIT. To support our channel's growth and ensure broader awareness, kindly hit the like and subscribe buttons. This will help us reach more individuals and disseminate valuable information. Thank you in advance.